What's up guys? Welcome to another video. There's no Vagabond this week because of sports. Mm. There's no My Country because Netflix screwed up their licensing. <laughs> so So are you telling me that there's no more episodes for My Country? At least available to us. So anyway, because of that, we're doing this video. What's this yes. video? What's next on our queue? First on our list is My First First Love. So Ooh. apparently there's a, there's a bunch of K-pop superstars starring in this dramedy. A story about love, friendship, and growing up. Yeah, it's a great change of pace for us. Mm -hmm. You know, My Country, Vagabond, a lot of the stuff we cover is very action-oriented. And uh, I guess people need to see uh, the sensitive side of us. The sensitive side of watching Sundays. Yes, when I think of romance, <laughs> I think of Con Air. No, uh, mm. yeah, like romance between two people, that, that kind of drama versus the drama involved in politics and mm -hmm. espionage. So, I mean, I think this would be a great change of pace for us. The story of my first first love is about a young man named Tang Yo who falls for his longtime friend Song Yi. What happens throughout the show from what we've seen in the trailer is that a bunch of him and his friends group up together, live in the same house to try to grow up and fall in love. Sounds like a dramedy kind of series that is you know, in the vein of Terrace House. Terrace House, if you guys have seen any of our videos of that, make sure you check it out. Now, obviously the first difference is they're not strangers, right? But they mm. are living together, which kind of makes the whole romance shtick a little bit unique in the fact that mm. they, they see each other every day. And it's in that dynamic that creates a, a different kind of romance, mm -hmm. a different kind of drama. I'm pretty sure it has something to do with really kind of falling in love for the first time in your youth and you're finding yourself and you're trying to grow up at the same time. So it could be interesting. Now, what's the first thing that stands out to you trying to create or trying to cultivate a romance living with the person first? I would probably compare it to a friend that you might have had for a really long time and you always had these feelings, but you were probably scared to take it to the next level because one, you'd probably be friend zoned but you might just end your friendship because you know you have these feelings and that person might not reciprocate now of course the other one is that you're risking it all and things might have actually you know happen so mm. i'm sure any of you guys have had those kinds of experiences leave it in the comment section below tell me more <laughs> the next series in our <laughs> what if yes i really do want to see this one it's called My Husband Won't Fit. It just won't fit. Is love and sex the same? Well, this one is about Kenichi and Kumiko. Mm -hmm. They're married and Kumiko suffers from a especially rare condition called vaginismus. Vaginismus. And that is a condition where you have involuntary uh, spasms of the muscles in the vaginal wall. Mm. And that can create problems uh, for penetration. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, it can make it impossible impossible to have sex now this is interesting to me first of all just when i saw this title mm -hmm. on netflix i was like what could that possibly mean then i saw the graphic for it the key art mm -hmm. which was you know the two figures with the check mark and the x mark and i'm like it's exactly what i think it means uh you know tell me more dr element so it's <laughs> it's interesting in the fact that um you know it seems like one of those very very adult like mm. a, like r-rated mm. type of subjects but it isn't but it's not it, it it kind of i would assume that it delves more into the psychology of loving someone that you can't be physical with yeah, that's very interesting. When I first saw the title, I thought it was, you know, obviously the first thing that popped in my head was, you know, was the husband's appendage maybe just way too small? <laughs> or was the or... woman's appendage... No. <laughs> no, woman's appendage. <laughs> or or was the woman's glove too tight? Too tight. Well, in this case, vaginismus, 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 mm. <laughs> however you pronounce it, uh, I think it's too tight. Interesting. And or, I think what ensues further on in the episodes or the series is that, as you said, it's a complex uh, dive into the relationships and the dynamic of loving someone but can't be physical with them. 
and apparently something happens along the way that really tests the relationship. I think that there's some comedy in here. Of course. I think there's a lot of comedy in here. And I am just really, really curious to see this one. What do you guys think? If you have actually seen it, leave it in the comment section below. And if you recommend that we do a review for it, comments below. The next one on our list is Memories of Alhambra. This one seems really interesting because it's been recommended many, many times by a few friends of mine. And it reminds me of a fantastical RPG game mixed in with some romance and some intriguing plot points between you know, worlds of indifference. It seems really cool. Yeah, I was uh, watching the trailer and saw some familiar imagery that kind of reminded me of Sword Art Online. Ooh. Um, there's a lot of augmented reality. Uh, there seems to be, as you said, some gaming elements involved mm -hmm. with swords and fighting and and player indicators. Yeah, that's all gamer cool. technology. But it also looks very quirky. Mm, maybe it's quirky. If you guys have seen it, guys, if you've seen Memories of Alhambra, let us know if you like it and if you want us to cover it a little bit more. Um, leave it in the comment section below. But I think uh, I'm really, I really want to see this one. Absolutely. Like after seeing more of this extended footage from the trailer, mm -hmm. it seems like there's a lot more action. And I know we're trying to look for a change of pace, but it seems like the underlying plot is like this romance mm. that's budding. Yeah. And, and it could be lighthearted in the end. Yeah, absolutely. And so the, the action might come as just like a symptom of, of like a subplot with the game and the augmented mm. reality and all that stuff. And, you know, of course, the main story revolving around the romance. Yeah. So and we'll if see. we like Kings of Avatar, we might actually like this one. Absolutely. <laughs> if you don't mind, I'd like to talk about the next title as Nicolas Cage. Oh. <laughs> so the next title on our list is tomorrow with you now it's about a real estate ceo that can travel through time mm -hmm. through a subway <laughs> uh, oh, and he man. sees many versions of his life you know all of which is living in misery yep and he, he decides to marry a cheery photographer to see if that will change his life mm, sounds very interesting sounds like the girl who leaped through time or the girl who leapt through time. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the synopsis <laughs> on this TV show. Mm. All versions of his life. I can just picture this. His misery. I can just picture this, like, bratty CEO who has tons of money, who very, very condescending and very, you know, kind of at the top of his game, just kind of change his life or change his personality as he experiences this life with another girl kind of ultimately in the end making him to be a nice human being. Yeah, I mean, this looks like one of those token uh, plot points where the guy has it all mm. and underneath it all, you know, the, the allegory there is that once you have it all, you know, you're, are you really that happy? Ah, oh, very well And, done. you know, I think this TV show is going to explore that psychology mm. a little bit. You know, he ha he's rich, he has it all, and he travels through time, but everything, every version of himself is sad. Yeah. And so I think it's going to explore him trying to, um, I guess, trying to fix his life. Mm. And it's going to, you know, go through all of the instances where, where everything he tries isn't working. Mm. Right. And then it comes down to, you know, sharing life with a partner that he loves mm. and it's going to change him forever. And, you know, the end might be that he loses it all. But, oh, he, but wow. he has, but he has a, a happier future, that happier is, version. That is interesting. And last but not least, When the Camellia Blooms. It's a brand new Netflix original from Korea, as everything that we've been talking about. <laughs> it's a for one Japanese uh, title. It's a, it's a story about a young woman who is a single mother who falls in love, I guess, or who meets this young man who has fallen head over heels for her. And uh, apparently there's a social stigma of what, what the story revolves around a single young mother. There's obviously, you know, those the cougar stereotypes? Not the cougar stereotypes, but how- but He's could, younger, right? Yeah, yeah, but how could you be a single mother, you know? How could you not keep your husband, that kind of stigma? Yeah. So I'm sure that a lot of that is kind of this social, you know, dynamic that goes on along in this whole entire story. I'm just interested to see how it all evolves and how it all comes to a close. I'm wondering if this show is, this show is 2019, right? Mm -hmm. So, so I would assume 
where I'm wondering if this show is actually a dialogue about the patriarchy and how, mm. you know, how that stigma affects a woman in her situation mm. when it shouldn't be, it shouldn't affect it at all. You know, that's just her. She's a single mother. Mm -hmm. Circumstances led to that. Other than that, that shouldn't, you know, be a thing. That shouldn't be something that defines her. Right. It shouldn't be something that is that is looked down upon, mm. you know, and I think that's the dialogue around this movie. Yeah. So guys, that's our list. Mm -hmm. We have a bunch of options to choose from. We may even end up watching all of them. We probably will. Over time. Mm -hmm. But you know what? We need your help to decide on the first one we're going to pursue. So my husband won't fit is a wholesome story that we're yeah, probably going to pursue. <laughs> probably. But in case in case we don't land on that automatically, mm -hmm. Leave it in the comment section down below. Tell us what you think. Tell us which one you've seen. If you haven't seen, what you're more interested in seeing us cover. And yeah, that'll do it for this uh, video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like. If you want to see more videos from us, subscribe, turn on notifications, and we'll see you next time, Con Air. 